Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. How about you? Oh, pretty good. Good. Not well, too shabby at all. <laughs> awesome. I'm Juliana uh, from Countries Local. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> um, so let's just get started. Um, can you tell me why and how you got started in country music? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> basically, like I grew up listening to the country. Um, I always, it was like my favorite genre since I was a kid. Uh, I have a cabin up in Northern BC and we'd always just listen to country music all the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was kind of doing some other music for, for a while, like in my, like, early twenties, um, makes me sound super old, but, uh, <laughs> I was doing this other kind of, kind of music, but I, I knew that if, you know, I was always going to end up back at my roots, which is country. And, and, uh, the reason why I actually got into it was, uh, I have a, a nonprofit that we do building projects down in Central America. And, uh, so I was actually, uh, on one of our trips down there and, uh, I just had like my guitar with me and I was, you know, playing some songs one night out on the patio or whatever it was, um, like a common area. And some guy from our trip, uh, Willie, he talked to me in the morning. He was like, was that you playing your guitar outside last night? And I was like, yeah, sorry, did I keep you up? And he's like, no, that was country music. I love country music. I was like, oh, yeah, like it's just I, I. I love country too. And he's like, I didn't know you're doing it professionally. And I was like, I'm not at all. I, I was actually just trying to impress that girl that was out there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I was like, no, I'm just doing this for fun. And uh, you know, I, I was a contractor at the time. So I was just running my business doing, uh, doing contracting work and um, running nonprofit. And I was just really happy with kind of just like doing that stuff. And he was like, well, you should be doing country music. Uh, he's like, were those your songs you're playing? I was like, yeah, it was. He goes, well, uh, he's like, if you want to help people, it because uh, like people's my passion over music. I love music too, but uh, people's my number one passion. And um, he goes, well, what if you got into country music and you started, you know, build a platform for yourself where people not only want to hear what you have to sing, but what you have to say and you use that to influence more people to, you know, help in different ways and in different areas. And, and, uh, I was like, yeah, that uh, crap. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and so I, that literally kind of sparked things for me. And I put my name out there to start playing for other artists. And I was just like a backup guitarist and, uh, vocalist for other people for a couple of years. And, um, yeah. And then all of a sudden my label, saw a video of me on Facebook singing with another friend and and uh doing a duet thing and and they ended up offering me a record deal there's way more to go with that but without taking an hour to explain it but uh that's kind of how I got started with country music and I guess like the reason why was because I wanted to use music to to help people and so uh still figuring out how to merge the two and and I think country music just has a you know a heartbeat for relating to people and helping and, and caring for others and stuff. And so it's going to happen. I just got to figure out exactly how, but, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the why and, and the how I got into uh, this freaking crazy business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so your first two singles with pillow talking and I would be over me too, both hit number one on Canadian country radio. So how did yeah. that feel starting out in your, music career and having those both hit number one and seeing how well it was received uh spoiled <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was told you know when when we were releasing the first song to not even expect like a top 50 at radio just because it's you're I was a brand new artist I didn't have any music out to my name um you know I was literally starting from scratch and um yeah, I was basically told like don't expect it. It's it's very hard to break into this market, so you're going to put up the first song and it's just going to, you know, maybe get your foot in the door. And then somehow we kicked the whole damn thing down. And uh <laughs> and so 
I remember actually the first time that we got the number one, the when Pillow Talk went number one, my label actually called me and they're like, hey, you got to get on a Zoom call because there's a crazy story where there's a spin missed on billboards. And so we thought we had actually missed it by one spin. And so we were like, oh my God, we got the number two, which was still mind blowing to me. Like I was, I was amazed that we even, you know, got a top 20. Um, but yeah, I got told that we had, we had just missed out Luke Combs by one spin. I was like, ah, dang it. Like, but whatever, number two is amazing. And then a couple of days later, I get a call from my label being like, Hey, we, you know, we got to get on a call. Like let's jump on a zoom call. And I was like, I was spraying the ceiling. Actually, I was painting. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm like covered in paint and everything. And I was like, I got no time. I gotta, I gotta do my job. And, and they're like, no, like you, you have to jump in this call now. I was like, okay. And so we jumped on a call and they were like our whole label and like our publicist and like everybody from it was on, on this call. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? And they were like, uh, they're like, yeah, we actually, the billboards missed a spin from this cookout uh, concert thing that I did online, but they played the spin on the radio. And so it counted and uh, they're like, yeah, you, uh, you just got the number one in Canada. And so I was just like, I thought they were screwing with me. I was like, this is a really mean joke. But then, uh, yeah, when I realized I was like, I, I don't know, I was just amazed. Like it, it's still still doesn't feel fully real like I don't think it's fully soaked in yet and even like right after they told me I was like my response was like holy crap uh I have to get back to work <laughs> I was like I can't let the ceiling dry I have to keep spraying <laughs> but uh but yeah it's just been it's been a wild ride and um you know I was even on a management call this morning and we were just talking about where we're at with things and and uh you know looking to the future and stuff for 2023 and we're just like we're ahead of ourselves which is like a really cool place to be, but like starting off my career with two number ones, uh, there's a lot of pressure with that because <laughs> you got to, you know, you don't want that to be the standard for yourself. I just want to put out music that I love and not, you know, necessarily think about the numbers or the charts or whatever. Like, I, you know, I just did a tour across Canada with Jess Moss Luke and yeah. seeing, seeing the fans at these shows and seeing them sing my songs, like, that's that's what this is about that's the success uh numbers and charts and everything are, are really cool and it's and it's good for our careers um but to see people singing the songs that's the best part of this business 100 yeah. percent. but still starting off with two number ones is it felt like the uh you know the carriage was ahead of the horse a little bit and so i feel like my whole career has just been trying to keep up <laughs> <laughs> no that's great um, so while these songs were hitting number one, we were also in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> uh, yes. So how did that impact your career during that time? Oh, yeah. Apparently the start of a pandemic is not the best time to start releasing music as a new artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we didn't expect like we we released like a couple months before the pandemic hit. So yeah. You know, we were feeling good. Everything was, you know, going up. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, and now you're never going to play a show until we don't know when. <laughs> so uh, it seemed like it should have been detrimental. But honestly, I think it might have been the best thing that happened in my career in that way, which not everybody can say that. So, like, I don't want to be insensitive to the pandemic. And, and you know, it stirred a lot of crap up and, and you know, a lot of people lost jobs and whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but there was silver lines in it for me. And I think that was uh, basically like we got to just invest in radio um, because we weren't able to do anything else. And radio seemed pretty susceptible to, to my music and my songs that were going out. And so, um, yeah, I, I feel like it should have been a bad thing, but it ended up being a really good thing for me in the long run because I felt like we got to skip a lot of steps. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have to just start playing these, you know, the small bar shows, which are still fun. I just, we just did a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, but like the first time I got to go out and actually play shows, it was like, 
like the first show I ever played was Calgary Stampede in Nashville North Ten, and like <laughs> they didn't know that. But uh, but then like you know the first times I'm able to go out and do like runs is you know I'm playing a Blue Jays game and Rough Riders halftime show, and then playing like festivals opening up for Luke Combs and Tim McGraw, and like it's yeah. just this unreal thing where it's like I felt like we got a lot of opportunities right off the bat after things started opening up uh and it was because we got to just invest in radio and we had four songs on the radio before i ever played a show and so wow. yeah so <laughs> the nice thing was that you know people didn't just know pillow talk and they knew the next three after mm -hmm. that as well and so uh when i get to start playing shows it wasn't like people were just watching me they were actually able to sing along which is the coolest thing and so uh, yeah, I feel like I just got to kind of start my career a few steps ahead uh, once things opened up for for live show. Um, and yeah, so it's yeah, it was a horrible time. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of good good things that came out of it for me for, uh, you know, music career wise. Yeah, for sure. And one of those things just wrapped up with the Map Dot tour with Just Mosk Luke. Uh, so yeah. That was your first tour. How was that experience for you? Yeah, it was. We did we did like an uh, an acoustic tour with my label last year, um, and it was just like a, an acoustic tour leading up to the CCMA's uh, mm -hmm. in London. But we uh, this was like my first like real yeah like going out playing shows tour with the band. Um, it was unreal. It was long. <laughs> I was in Nashville for two weeks before as well. And so oh, yeah. the tour itself was like six weeks or something like that. And so, um, yeah, I was away from home for a long time. So uh, that was a bit tough. Like, I love being on the road. It's it's a blast and I love it. But it's definitely hard being on a bus and living out of suitcase and hotel rooms when we get them. Yeah. sort of thing uh and living in a bunk bed that's like just the width of my body <laughs> but uh you know it can get tiring and, and a bit uh mundane when you're just traveling for like long stints but then you know you can be tired as hell up until showtime and you walk on stage and just the energy of the crowd just brings you right back and gives you that adrenaline rush and and uh, there's some days that it's like, man, like I could just be home, like just chilling out, watching Netflix or whatever, just like, but then you're like, but this is the best part. Like, this is, this is what this is about getting in front of people and being able to play shows and, and be able to be with the fans and stuff. And so, um, yeah, we just had a blast and, you know, me and Jess did like a medley thing as well. And part of, her set and got to sing a duet with her and stuff and so she's just she, jess is like a sister to me especially being on the same label it's we get to do a lot of stuff together um and so yeah it just kind of felt like home and uh you know if i was going to start off touring with anybody i'm glad that it was jess mm -hmm. um and yeah we, I, I think we just had a blast and it was really tough because at the end like we're all kind of ready for our own beds and our homes yeah. and stuff but but it's tough like we're all still like in our group chat all the time just like reminiscing about everything like you know it's it's tough when you become such a tight-knit family on the road um and you just don't see those people for a while <laughs> so but with all that said it was just it, it was an unbelievable first tour um and it was really cool to see you know what fans i have where i have them yeah, because I haven't really got to see that outside of like the festival circuits, basically, um, where there's a bunch of people playing those days. But like these ones, it was, you know, they're here to come see Jess and myself. And so um, really cool to see people singing my songs in country or in cities all across the country. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I was actually at your Winnipeg show. Oh, yeah. And it was great. So congrats on that. You put on such a good show. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, feel free to come back to Winnipeg anytime. <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah. yeah. 
We just have a uh, bad luck with Portage La Prairie, though. We our bus broke down there like two times. Oh no, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't Winnipeg <laughs> where the bad luck happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, Winnipeg's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, is there a moment on tour for you that really stands out? Oh. Yeah, I guess so. We, so I, I haven't really had like a home show. And so we, uh, we came into Vancouver and I, I live in Langley just outside of Vancouver and, um, it's like a half an hour away and, uh, we had a Vancouver date. And so I'm like stoked, you know, we get to do my hometown show, like my first one, basically and uh i played like a an acoustic show at like a brewery it was like this festival thing but it ended up being acoustic because of covid protocol stuff Mm -hmm. that was like my technically my first one but this was like a real like full band show and then the day of like jess started having some like some throat issues and she was getting sick and so the day of she we basically had to call off the show because Jess was too sick to sing and she's never canceled the show ever before. Mm -hmm. So uh, we knew that it was, it was really rough um, for her. And so uh, we ended up just having me playing a 90 minute set and just me. And so he's kind of, they're like TJ up for (laughs) up for the challenge. I was like, crap. Yeah, I am. Uh, and the perfect thing was that it was in Vancouver where my home show or where my hometown is, but also like my band, I was using Jess's band for the tour. Uh, cause we, you know, all had to fit on one bus. So I wasn't able to bring my band with me, but my band was all coming to the show. And so I called them an hour before and was like, Hey guys, are you in town yet? And they're like, yeah, we're having dinner around the corner. I was like, cool. You guys want to play a show? <laughs> And so they're playing on everybody else's instruments and stuff, like all of Jess's yeah. band's instruments and everything. And so it was chaos, but it was like so fun mm-hmm. because it, it, I don't, th- there's something about it when, when, you know, it's kind of a plug and play, like, all right, these are the songs we're playing, I guess. And it's just like, yeah. you know, we, we just, we just pulled it off and uh, I'm just so thankful for my band and that they were there because they're just such pros and uh, and they're always down for, you know, to play. And so yeah. that was probably the most memorable one for me because it was a, such a time of chaos, but it ended up being just like the best show. Mm-hmm. And the fans were just so great with it. And and uh, and they just wanted to hear some country music. And so, um, yeah, it, it was it was phenomenal. It was it was a really good show. That happened from a very chaotic couple of hours of trying to figure out what the hell we were going to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's funny yeah. how it all came together with your band just being right around the corner it couldn't have happened in a better city so I'm just thankful that it was that one instead of one that we would have you know had to cancel the whole thing yeah we had to still give people a show so yeah so out of your songs do you have a favorite or maybe one that's most meaningful to you Ooh. <laughs> yeah like songs that i've released yeah because we have a lot of songs not yet released okay but uh yeah i think i got a, my song called fighting um i wrote that with my good friends uh dan swinimer west mac other country artists mm-hmm. and uh, uh dave faber and it was our first time ever writing together and we were just like, we were in pretty rough condition. Like I had like a herniated disc in like my neck and stuff. And like the other guys were like going through back issues and stuff. And so we almost called it off and then we were like, no, screw it. Like, let's just, let's push through. And so we did. And uh, we got just like talking about life for probably like a couple of hours before we actually got writing a song. Mm-hmm. But I was just kind of going through some stuff uh, personally of just like, wasn't really happy with like who I was at that moment. And, and I was just wanting to do better and be better. And so we were just talking about that. And then I opened up kind of about my own personal life and, and uh, the other guys were like, Oh yeah, 
like me too. And then you realize like once you're vulnerable and open about things like that, like you realize you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And so we are like, we didn't realize that for those first like hour or two, we were actually writing the song because that's what we wrote about. And we wrote about fighting with ourselves, become better people. And, uh, and all of us kind of agreed. We're like, yeah, this is the kind of song we want to write. And let's, we actually said, we're like, let's not think about radio. Let's not think about streaming. Let's not think about anything other than just writing a song that we believe in. Mm -hmm. And, and we really did because, you know, after we, we, we had the song that we knew that we loved, but we didn't really have any like, care to bring it to radio or anything we're like if we release it like we just want people to love it and connect with it yeah um and so it ended up being our third song that we put out and then became a top 10 at, at radio too so like for something that we were like yeah we're not going to think about this like it was really cool to have the support all around mm -hmm. uh, for that kind of song and that radio wanted to play something so vulnerable because I don't know it can be it can be tough and it's it's a bit of a downer I guess sometimes when you when you sing about songs like that but but the song is really about hope it's about being better and and you know giving everything you got to to you know better yourself and become a better person and so um yeah it was really cool that that we got to release a song that we believed in so much and that talks about that kind of content and then we would just have like a flood of messages coming in of people being like, this is what I'm dealing with. And this is how the song, you know, relates to me. And this is my story and all this. And it became way less about me and the other writers stuff that we had going on and more about the fan story, which was the coolest part about this whole song. Uh, because I think that's what music's about and what country music's supposed to be about. And so, yeah, I'd say fighting was probably the the favorite one that I've released so far because of, um what's happened with it and how it's connected with fans yeah that's great so mm -hmm. now that tour is done what is next for you I know you said you have a lot of unreleased songs so maybe <laughs> getting some of those up <laughs> yeah we uh yeah we we still have a song out at radio right now never met a beer with my good pal Matt Lang um and so, yeah, we still got that going at radio, but we are itching to get some new stuff out. So pretty early on in the new year, I think we're going to have at least a new singles coming out. Okay. And uh, yeah, I can't say what it is yet, but we got a new one coming out. Yeah. Um, but we're also sitting on a lot of songs that are, you know, finished and done. So I, we actually had a management call this morning about that. And so we're uh we're just wanting to get content out so that people can hear more music and and so uh 2023 i think is going to be a good time for that okay well i'm looking forward to it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then just more i i'm i focus a lot on writing and stuff as well so i'll be down in nashville again and and uh just trying to write as much as i can awesome so that's kind of what the next steps are yeah well, those are all of the questions I have for you, but thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I'm happy to.